Why would anyone believe that the People's Republic of China could actually lose a war to Taiwan? Now, for the purpose of this analysis, we're going to assume a few things. One, China doesn't go nuclear. Two, the US only supplies money and materials, no boots on the ground. And three, victory for Taiwan simply means that it stays independent. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at the matchup between the two armies, which, spoiler alert, doesn't look that great for Taiwan. China spends roughly 293 billion a year that we know of on its military of over 2 million active duty and over 500,000 reserves. That is the second largest defense budget in the world and the largest active duty military. By contrast, Taiwan spends only 19.3 billion and has an active duty force of only 219,000. So Nick, with the deficits you just mentioned, how in the world can you say that Taiwan even has a chance at winning? Well, comparing numbers on spreadsheets is one thing, but managing a coordinated sea and airborne invasion, not to mention the monstrous logistics train necessary to sustain it, is no joke. The invasion of Normandy, which was the largest seaborne invasion in world history, was only successful because the Allies crossed less than 30 miles of ocean with overwhelming numbers, complete naval and air domination, and they were fighting an enemy that had most of its forces deployed over a thousand miles away fighting the Soviet Union. And despite all of those advantages, General Eisenhower had prepared an oops we failed speech that he actually anticipated having to give. Now let's consider what the PRC would have to do. They would have to mobilize tens of thousands of troops and transport them to port without being detected, which wouldn't happen because unlike in World War II, we have those pesky satellites looking at every major Chinese division and naval base. Then they have to load those tens of thousands of men onto available troop transports for a hundred plus mile journey across the Taiwanese Strait, all supported by a fleet and air force that is technologically inferior to that of the United States and much of the Taiwanese since we sell them a lot of our equipment. And even if they do manage to make the journey relatively unscathed, they still have to pull off a massive amphibious assault on relatively few suitable landing sites, only to be met by a fully mobilized and incredibly determined military that has grown overnight from 219,000 to 2 million thanks to their reserves. Then, let's say, by some miracle, without complete naval and air dominance, they manage to establish a beachhead. They're still going to have to manage a complex logistics chain that will require them to defend a hundred miles of ocean between the troops on the beach and their closest source of supply back on the mainland. Bottom line, if Taiwan was a neighboring country sharing a land border with the People's Republic of China, things would be very, very different. But they aren't and they don't. Taiwan has a population that has grown very accustomed to freedom over the last 70 years. They have prospered under free markets, representative government, and a close relationship with the United States. Their people don't want to live under the yoke of communism, and a population determined to resist an invader has demonstrated time and again throughout history to be a very formidable opponent.